Hi, this is Dr. Michelle O'Donoghue reporting from Medscape. Joining me today is Dr. Sahil Parikh, who's a cardiologist and an interventionist at Columbia University. He's an associate professor of medicine. And we'll be discussing two interesting trials that were presented at um, ESC Congress here in Amsterdam. Um, and they do have uh, the potential to be very practice changing. So I, I think it's worth talking about. So the first trial we'll be talking about is the FIRE trial. Mm -hmm. So perhaps setting the stage, Sahil, um, I'd love to get your thoughts, but we've had data in this space to suggest that for patients with STEMI, that a strategy of complete revask and not just treating the culprit lesion, but also treating additional lesions um, may be of benefit. Um, so where does that lead us in terms of what we didn't know? Yeah, so I, I think that the practice has moved, in, at least in the United States, over the last two decades from staging PCIs over 30, 30 days from the index intervention to now trying to do patients in the same hospitalization whenever possible to achieve complete revask. And I think these data support not only that complete revask is, is compulsory now in these patients, but also doing it sooner rather than later. And that the benefit applies to most of the patients that we see in clinical practice. The earlier data, uh, the patients were re relatively youthful uh, under Medicare age, uh, less than 65. And now this, this data set has a median age of 80. And so this is more like the real world clinical practice that most of us are encountering. Uh, and it actually extends the benefit uh, perhaps greater than we've ever seen before. Yeah, so the FIRE trial is interesting. As you say, it enrolled patients who were over the age of 75. Um, where I think that you know some some proceduralists are probably a little bit hesitant to, to you know think about complete revask due to concerns about um, any you know additional contrast load on their kidneys, other types of comorbidities, and of course for any trial there's going to be some patient selection, but I think very reassuring that even in this older patient group, a strategy of treating all the lesions and not only in STEMI but also in non-ST elevation MI patients. Um, that that reduced cardiovascular events and mortality. I, I was really right. quite impressed by the mortality benefit. Right, the mortality curve is, is almost surprising to me. Uh, on the other hand, um, it, it emboldens us now that we can treat these patients um, more completely and earlier in their clinical presentation. So certainly we worried a lot about contrast exposure and the duration of procedures in this older population. But it seems that, that the benefit that's derived that we saw in younger patients where we had a natural inclination to be more aggressive uh, extends also to this older population. And so to the question of timing, as, as you mentioned, um, you know, prior to this, we had a, a study presented earlier this year, the BioVasc trial, that also was suggestive that maybe earlier complete revascularization was better, um, but it, it, it wasn't a significant difference, at least for the primary outcome. Um, now we've got Multistars AMI um, that is very supportive of what we saw earlier this year. So suggesting that complete revascularization really at the time that you're treating the culprit may be the way to go. All of us as interventionists are circumspect about what we might do in the middle of the night versus what we would do in the light of day. But certainly it seems clear, particularly if there's straightforward anatomy, that taking care of it in the index procedure is not only saving contrast and fluoroscopy time, uh, but also is gonna provide a clinical benefit to the patients. So that, that's something that will also impact um, how clinicians interpret these data. Um, previously, there was always a question about, you know, should we just do it in the same hospitalization uh, or do it at the same time? Um, and, I, and I think now increasingly we're again emboldened to do more in the index procedure. And when you're thinking about um, non-culprit lesions and which ones to treat, do you always make that determination based on physiologic guidance of some kind? Are you using IFR? What's your practice? In the acute setting, imaging is superior um, for the at least the assessment of which is a culprit stenosis. If you see a ruptured, uh, you know, atherothrombotic situation on OCT, for example, that's fairly convincing and definitive. In the absence of that, physiology we are taught to avoid in the infarct-related artery because of potential spuriously false negative uh, findings. And so I think in this situation, certainly an imaging uh, subgroup probably would be helpful because some of the benefit is almost certainly derived from identifying the infarct-related artery by accident. In other words, doing what you thought was the non-culprit artery, which is in fact the culprit. 
Um, and, and I think that that certainly probably is part of this. So uh, as somebody who uses imaging in the, in the overwhelming number of my uh, cases, uh, I think that imaging would be an important um, surrogate to this. And so for the operator who is coming in to do their STEMI case at two in the morning, um, you know, would these data now push you towards doing complete revask at that time of night? Or do you think that there's wiggle room in terms of interpreting these results regarding timing, where as long as you were doing it before hospital discharge and not, let's say, 30 days out, um, that you may be able to derive the same benefit? What are sort of the pros, cons? There's definitely a fatigue factor uh, in the middle of the night if it's particularly an arduous you know, intervention for the index infarcolated artery. I think there's a, a factor that uh, there's a human element where it may make sense um, just to, to stop and then bring the patient back in the same hospitalization. It's clear though that doing complete revask is better and doing it sooner is better. And so how soon one actually does it is a judgment call as, as ever. Um, in our practice though, we've been pushing ourselves to get most of the patients done in their index hospitalization. Um, and if, for example, if, if you have a left-sided culprit the LAD, for example, and there's a high-grade stenosis in the circumflex, it may make sense to take care of that in the same index procedure. If, on the other hand, it's in the right coronary where you have to put a new guide in uh, and spend more time, um, that may be a patient where you stage them. And so I think those nuances, I think, will come up as interventionists look at the subgroup analysis data more carefully. Yeah, those are great points. And I think also underscores that we always need to think about what type of patient was enrolled in these studies. Um, and certainly, if you have somebody with a lot of renal dysfunction, there might be more concern about giving them a large contrast load all in one, one sitting, um, albeit hard to know whether or not sp spacing that out by just a couple of days would, would really have a big impact. Right, and very often in the STEMI patient, you don't have the benefit of knowing uh, what is their creatinine. Um, the patient will come in uh, immediately, if not directly from the ambulance to the cath lab, and there's no laboratories at all to work with. And if the patient's never been seen in the system before, you won't know. So again, in those situations, one might have pause, particularly mm -hmm. if it's an older patient. Um, I think what's reassuring, though, is that, that the data are supportive uh, of being more aggressive earlier. Um, and, and certainly, this is the data, data set that we were looking for. So I think, yeah, just to summarize, that the, the two key takeaways, I think, are that, one, we now have more data to support a complete revask strategy and even extending that now to non-ST elevation MI patients. Um, and then two, sooner appears to be better. So um, ideally all done um, at the time of the uh, in index uh, procedure. So I think very interesting science and we'll, we'll see how it changes practice. So thanks for joining me today and uh, signing off from Medscape. This is Dr. Michelle O'Donoghue.